the Olympic movement is having difficulty finding countries that are willing to go to the bother of staging. The possibility of hosting any mega events, particularly the Olympic Games, should be considered. Greetings everyone, why do some countries refuse to host Olympics? Hmm, let's get it straight in this video. The COVID-19 epidemic has rendered hosting the Olympic Games a prohibitively expensive endeavor. One of the overage players for Germany steps up. Denied by Riverton! If it is to find willing hosts for the world's top athletic events, the International Olympic Committee will have to continue to make major economic adjustments to the Games. The International Committee, otherwise known as IOC, took an unprecedented step on September 13, 2017. It chose Los Angeles to host the 2028 Summer Olympics without even soliciting other candidates. Thus, admitting that finding willings and skilled Olympic hosts have become extremely difficult. Cities used to be compete as fiercely as athletes for the right to host the world's most prestigious event. 11 towns applied to organize the Summer Olympics in 2004, compared to 10 bids in 2008, and 9 more in 2012. However, in recent years, everything has changed. At least 5 possible host cities, all Western democracies, withdrew from the bidding process after voter referendums or public polls revealed a lack of local support, leaving just Beijing, China, and Almaty, Kazakhstan in the race. Similarly, several puzzle host cities withdrew from their applications for the 2024 Summer Olympics, leaving just Paris and Los Angeles in the final pools. Faced with the possibility of having no qualifying candidates for the 2028 Summer Olympics, Aussie granted Paris the 2024 event while also awarding Los Angeles the 2028 Games. So, what's behind this seismic shift in the Olympic landscape? The answer is rising expenses and growing awareness of the financial dangers that the Olympic impose on host towns. A fact that only exacerbated by the worldwide COVID-19 outbreak. The contemporary Olympics have become a very costly event. Each of the last five Summer Olympics, but both of the previous Winter Olympics have costed cities more than $10 billion, with the 2008 Beijing Summer Games costing more than $45 billion, and the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics costing more than $50 billion. The event's rising expenses have outpaced even the expansion of worldwide corporate deals and global television rights. For example, the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio, which cost the Brazilian government and organizers at least $13 billion, only generated $9 billion in income, much of which it was retained by the IOC, and so could not be utilized to pay the cost of hosting. More empirical analysis of the previous Olympic Games have revealed to be a minor, if any, improvement in financial activities as a result increased tourists during the event any boost in Olympic tourism might be offset by a reduction in typical tourists trying to avoid Olympic traffic, expensive prices, and security concerns. Indeed, net tourism dropped by 5% in London in 2012 and by nearly 20% in Beijing in 2008. Most previous host cities have an even more difficult time identifying long-term legacy effects and the few studies that claim to show major macroeconomic advantages from hosting break apart when compared to a similarly similar nation that did not want to host the event. To be sure, word of mouth is the most effective approach to increase tourism, but this can be lost in host towns. Visitors visiting London in 2012, for example, may have returned home to tell their friends, neighbors, and family about the 100 meter sprint they saw but they may have said nothing about the Piccadilly Circus or the British Museum, two of the city's most popular tourist sites. And be aware that being on the international stage may bring both good and bad PR to a city, such as photos of traffic congestions, scorching hot temperatures, or potential crisis. There are a variety of reasons why the Olympics have become such a costly event. The Summer Olympics have evolved from a humble beginnings 125 years ago to include almost 12,000 participants from over 200 nations participating in over 300 events. Nearly 3,000 athletes from 92 countries are competing over the 100 events in the Winter Olympics. 
the enormous scale of these activities contributes to their, to their exorbitant cost and practically guarantees that no one city will have the necessary venues in a place to host the game. Furthermore, several sports need specialized infrastructure that will need to be built, particularly for the Olympics, and will only be used for a brief time after the games. Indeed, recent hosts have been troubled by the problem of white elephants or underutilized and abandoned venues following the Olympics. Summer Games host cities must provide 40 sports facilities on an Olympic village housing around 16,000 athletes, trainers, and coaches, a huge international media center, as well as a media village, and transportation and parking to allow for easy mobility between these venues. There will also be requirements for ceremony space and parkland, which would necessitate thousands of acres of precious urban real estate to stage the games. To make place for all of this, Individuals must invariably be pushed aside, displacing thousands, if not over a million, of local folks from their residencies. It is also an unpleasant truth that the Olympics have twice been the subject of terrorist attacks, making them a prominent target for terrorists. The cost of security for the Summer Olympics have increased sixfold during the 1990s and currently exceeds $1.5 billion adding to the already hefty hosting expenditures. The Olympics have also been hampered by the organizers' failure to adequately control expenses and forecast spending. The Tokyo 2020 or 2021 Olympic Games are a good example of expensive overruns. In 2013, with a bid of $7.3 billion, Tokyo was granted hosting rights. Nevertheless, according to the government assets, the overall cost was expected to be in the 30 billion range. For a total of 1.3 billion, the IOC will provide 800 million in international television money and 500 in foreign sponsorship earnings. It's easy to put Tokyo's challenges down the games being hit by the worldwide COVID-19 epidemic. While the one-year postponements and public health precautions have added about a 3 billion cost, no foreign visitors will be permitted to attend the games. Any increase to hotel stays and restaurant meals will be gone, and ticket sales will fall short of 900 initial forecast. Additionally, drastic reduced in-person crowds are likely to affect local sponsorship income and may even impact negatively global viewer ratings. However, these negative financial consequences are a drop in the bucket compared to the worrying deficit in the tens of billions of dollars. Losses that were unavoidable even before the COVID-19 devastated spectator sports around the world, revealing a fundamental issue in the Olympic economic model. A winning bid must demonstrate not only how the host will successfully manage the competition, which is a huge undertaking by itself, but also how we will provide the IOC with more facilities, reputation, and cash flow than any other competing bid, resulting in an arms race in which proposals will become increasingly luxurious and unaffordable. The bidding procedure has become so well known that the IOC's 2019 reform aims to do away with the open bidding and replace it with behind the scenes conversation with potential hosts. The utilization of aged but still serviceable existing amenities kept expenses low, with the total bill for the whole event coming in under 1.4 billion price tag for only Tokyo's new national stadium constructed for the 2020 or 2021 Summer Games even after inflation was factored in. Obviously, for future taxpayers, many bidders and lavish offers quickly become the norm. The sequence of aggressive competitive bidding, exorbitant hosting costs decreased demand for hosting, and more leverage for potential hosts appeared to be recurring itself. If the IOC wishes to maintain the spectacle of contemporary games, the IOC has recognized that its market influence has dwindled, and as a result, reform initiatives have emerged, professing a renewed commitment to financial viability and economic sustainability. The IOC's first announced its reform called Agenda 2020 in December 2014, followed by the new norm two years later, and finally a new model in 2019 that limits open competition and aims to prevent the shame of having to know 
or a little bitters. As these improvements have the potential to reduce hosing costs by one or two billion dollars, because the hose have rarely lost more than 10 billion dollars. Much more has to be accomplished to steady the Olympic ship. And the solution may be as simple as naming one or a few permanent host towns. Conducting a mega event necessitates urban redevelopment. However, expanding athletic venues, lodging, and transportation networks to accommodate an influx of tourists and players is far from easy. Before reshaping the urban environment, players must first choose which sites will be rebuilt, for whom, and why. Have you ever watched the Olympics? If you went, how is your experience? Who is your favorite Olympic athlete? And which is your favorite sport? Please leave a comment for each of them in the comment box. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.